Hi guys, welcome to the Great Sign Share. My name is Margus from Creature Arc and this beautiful girl here is Cruella. Now today guys what we're talking about is animal and animals and their habitats. We're talking about habitats, we're talking about the Arctic, the Antarctic, tundra, the savanna, rainforest, through to desert areas. And all of those different habitats, the animals that live in those different habitats, have to adapt to be able to survive successfully. So you're going to be looking at a couple of animals today. We're going to be looking at that, their adaptations, how they've changed to be able to survive in their different habitats. And this girl here is actually a desert tarantula. She's actually native to Chile. She's a Chilean rose tarantula. So she's native to the Atacama de Desert, one of the most arid areas on Earth, one of the most dry areas on Earth. Now, she is a member of the arachnid family. Now, the arachnid family, they have eight legs. So she's got eight jointed legs. So she's got eight joints and eight legs. She looks like she's actually got 10 legs. Those two things at the front there are called pedipalps and they help direct her food into her mouth. She's an ambush predator and she lie in wait until something nice and juicy comes along. Then she'll pounce out, inject her victim with venom. And that venom turns the inside of her victim into a mush or a soup. In fact, her, her venom has the ability to immobilize and then break down the cells in her victim's body. So she doesn't have teeth. What she does is she sucks the insides out of her victim and she's actually got a special suckling stomach. Now, look at how she moves there. She moves each leg independently, but she moves in a different way than we do. She actually pumps spider blood down into her legs. It's a bit like the, the hydraulic system of a tractor. And that pumping system in her body is uh, initiated by her buck lungs, and her buck lungs help her breathe as well. So she's pretty amazing. So if we look at all those fantastic colours, let's just turn around so we can look at it closely. Look at all those fantastic colours. That's her camouflage, that her, helps her survive. And she's another name for this particular tarantula is the flame hair tarantula. Those hairs um, suffer, uh, give her a different purpose. Um, she, she uses those hairs to find out about the world around her. They're very, very sensitive. She has eight eyes. Let me just see if we can point there. She has eight eyes, but they're very, very tiny. Most different eye, eight eyes do different things. Some may, may detect movement, some de detect light and shade, some may detect colour. But she finds out about the world around her by all of her hairs, her sensory hairs. And she's active primarily at night, so she's nocturnal. But those hairs also have another purpose as well. If she feels threatened, what she can do, she can rub her back legs against this big bit here, which is her abdomen, and kick off a flurry of little hairs called urticating hairs. And those urticating hairs can get into the throat of the attacker, to the eyes of the attacker, and give her a chance to get away. So we turn around there. There we go. You see on the back of her abdomen there, she's got two things, which are tucked away at the moment. But when they come out, they're called her spinnerets. And she's got a silk gland in her abdomen that produces silk. And different spiders, depending where they live, can produce different uh, webs. Now, she can line her burrows. She's a burrowing spider, so she can line her burrows, make them more comfortable. But she also has the ability as well to make a tripwire. So she's walking along. She thinks something's following her. She has the ability um, to, to feel that with that little tripwire silk she's made and get a chance to, to move away. So she's she's very beautiful. But different spiders can do different things. There's even actually a ball of spider that can catch its prey by spinning a little ball on the end of a um, on the end on the end on the end of a string. Um, and that's an arboreal spider and will catch things that fly along. So even spiders can, um, living on a floodplain in Australia, they have the ability to be able to dive when the floodwaters come and make themselves a little air bubble to be able to survive. So it should just move around there. Now, I'm going to show you something really interesting because although we can see a lot of 
Cruella here we can't actually see underneath so what I'm going to do is going to show you um, a tarantula shed so let me just pop her down and we'll have a look at that so let's have a look at a tarantula shed there we go let's have a look underneath there so we talked about her fangs well there there's the fangs there that's a a tarantula shed so of course spiders don't have a, ver have a backbone they're invertebrates so they've got an exoskeleton around the outside to keep them all together but of course to be able to grow from very small spiderlings and, and on a regular basis to be able to refresh and renew themselves they shed their exoskeletons so the proteins separate 